يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها ووث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم عملكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يتع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما First we thank Allah سبحانه وتعالى for reuniting us again in the in the best place we've missed the house of Allah for so long and we thank him for giving us a chance to come back as we know the believers without the masjid is like a fish taking out of water but whatever Allah does he does it for some hikmah for some wisdom and we ask him to pardon us for our errors and our shortcomings those whom we have lost during this critical moment may Allah forgive them have mercy on their souls those who are ill may Allah grant them shifa and make the uh, illness purification for their sins and those also that have been uh, spared may Allah keep you all safe or may Allah keep all us safe <clears throat> Amin and I believe that we have not reached the full number yet, but the material seems to be full. So those of you that are organizing, don't sit down. You have to start to think what you will do for those that are coming. Because they will continue to come and there is no space. Now what is the way out? This is a part of uh, being a volunteer. You don't sit down, you completely stay on your position. Once you sit down, then a second group will come, then it will become chaos. You can count the number. I can barely see maybe 50 or 60. So that means we have another 40 moments to come. When they come, you are not in your position, and then they will just, there will be a confusion. You get the same exact reward those that are sitting and listening to the khutbah will get. If your reward is not more, it will not be any less. Uh, one. Or oh, point number two. Now point number three, my brothers and sisters. I know a lot has been going on and we cannot talk about all of it in one khutbah. It will take a time. But the point that I would like to address right now is the matter of al-azimatu wa ruhsa in our deen. These are two very important points we have in our deen. Knowing them will help us and it will enable us to help others. <clears throat> Not knowing them can uh, make our life difficult, sometimes miserable, or put us into danger, we will also cause other people problem. In Islam, we have uh, two rulings. One is called Azima. Azima means, هِيَ مَا شَرْعَهُ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى عَصَالَةً مِنَ الْأَحْكَامِ الْعَامَةِ التي لا تختص بحال دون حال ولا بالمكلف دون مكلف. When you heard that عزيمة, I will try to translate it uh, with my own wording and the way that you all can understand it. We can say it is the initial strict rules or the initial general strict rules that makes no difference between a situation and other or from a person who has been addressed by Allah and another. This is my own definition for it or 
putting in my word. I'll give you an example. In Islam, Allah will give an order. This order is the default. It is for everybody at all time. For example, we have to declare the oneness of Allah as a Muslim at all time, at all places. We have to pray five daily salat. Maybe I skip. We have to respect and honor Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu as a messenger of Allah. This is general. It's not specified to time to time. All right. We have to pray five daily obligatory salat. Fasting, zakat, and hajj. This is al-azimah. There is no excuse on it. Because Allah said, aqimu salat wa atu zakat. But there is another second rule. It's known to be al-ruhsa. The meaning of ruhsa is هِيَ مَا شَرْعَهُ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى مِنَ الْأَحْكَامِ تَخْفِيفًا عَلَى الْمُكَلَّفِ أَوْ مَا شُرِعَ لِأُذْرٍ شَاقَ فِي حَالَةٍ خَاصَةٍ أَوْ هِيَ إِسْتِبَاحَةُ الْمَحْذُورِ بِدَلِيلِ مَا الْقِيَامِ دَلِيلِ الْحَاذِرِ Now, the ruqsa I am going to explain on my way so you will understand. Is in sort of speech a way out, a window, so that you can breathe in a specific situation or conditions. I will give you an example so you will fully understand. Now Allah is to be declared one. If you take another route, you are sinning. But sometime when there is a gun put on your head, and you are being asked, what is your position about so-called God? Or that man called Prophet Muhammad? If you are to stick to the strict law, you will lose your life. And Islam is a religion of that is known to make it easy on people, not to put you on unnecessary difficulty. At that moment, whatever you can say to God that will help you to spare your life, then you are being excused to say that. Did I make this part clear? Whatever that you can say that will please that person at that moment will let you save your life, you are excused to say that. That's what I meant to say, a way out. But this is in a specific situation. Now, let's move on. I can give you an example on that. Allah says in the Quran, إِلَّا مَنْ أُكْرِهَ وَقَلْبُهُ مَطَمَعِنٌ بِالْإِيمَانِ you can utter the statement of kufr or shirk when you are porous, when your life is at question, as long as your heart is still firm on Allah's oneness. Same thing applies on Prophet Muhammad. They took one shahaba, they beat him, he was about to die. Right? They were asking him to say something derogatory to Prophet Wasallam. And he couldn't take it anymore. He said it. And after that, he felt bad. And when he come to the Prophet, the Prophet said, Don't worry. When they repeat it, you repeat what you said. Now, let's leave that on the side. We go to the second pillar of Islam, Salat. Salat is one of those obligations which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Inna salata kanat ala mu'minina kitab al -mawkuta. Salat is an obligation. The time happened to be prescribed. The place happened to be prescribed. The way 
which need to be used to perform that salat has been prescribed in well detail. And I don't know any other ibadah that we have in Islam that is well prescribed in the salat. The Jibreel alayhi salam came from the seventh heaven in the first time to pray Zuhur at the same time with the Prophet. Asr, Maghrib, Isha, and Fajr. Mind you, I didn't say Fajr, I started from Zuhur. I believe the first salat to be performed with the Prophet was Zuhur. Then the next day he came again with a slightly different Zuhur, Asr, Maghrib, Isha. Then he said, this is the time for them. Now this is Al-Azimah. We have to do it on those times in the normal cases or circumstances. No excuse. Now the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi told us when we are doing that Salat, we need to come very close to one another to a point Toes touch, a toes and shoulder touch a shoulder. And those roles also need to be very close. Now, if you don't do this, yes, you are sinning. But in a normal setting. Now, when that normalcy is not there, then another rule kicks in, is called a ruhsa. Right. You have a lot of examples of that. When it's raining, Zuhur and Asr time changes. They will be put together. Maghrib and Isha will be put together. Sometime, coming to the masjid is a must, but in that circumstances, then you are allowed to stay home. I don't know if I'm making myself clear. Because we as a Muslim, we are used to getting closer to one another. Now when that is not taking a place, something is itching in our hearts. And some people will even see a problematic. But I'm coming. So this is another example to show us the ruqsa. Now even that, <clears throat> I can give you the third and fourth. Eating a pork, Drinking a wine is haram. But when you are hungry, your life it as a line, then Allah said, فَمَنِ It is the hunger which happened to push you to eat, not an inclination towards the evil, you are forgiving. Now this is called al ruhsa way out. They will say mitigation or simplicity or allowing someone to do that which is haram for a specific reason. Now who gives that reason? Sharia, not you and I. Now I'll go back to my point. Now when the ruhsa is given, some time to take it is up to you. You want it, you take it, you don't want it, fine. But it's a window. Allah said you can use this to breathe. I like to give example, help people to understand. To fast the during the month of Ramadan is azima. This is the strict rules given to us. But when you are sick, traveling, something in that nature, then you can break your fast. This is a door out. If you want to use it, all up to you. If you don't want to use it, fine. But in another instant, taking those way out, it will be highly appreciated. It will be even better than sticking to the strict law. That's when the Prophet will say, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah is happy. He loves when He gives you a way out, when you take advantage out of that way out. And in other circumstances, taking that way out is a must. 
If you don't take it, you are sinning. This is the part people miss. Because we had a disconflict in our community. Some people think like, oh, those that pray apart from each other, they're just coward, they're just afraid. That's not right. They're sticking to the azima. They forgot about the ruhsa. I said you are sinning. Can I back it up? Yes. We know as a Muslim, before we pray, we must make wudu. Or if we happen to be with our spouse or have a wet dream, we must take what? Spiritual bath. Correct? This is al-azima. This is the strict rules given to us. But sometimes a situation can occur, these rules is no longer applicable. If you stick to it, you're wrong. There was a group of people, the Prophet sent them out for a battle, and the battle was very intensified. As usual, some people got hurt, they were cut. One Sahaba got a wound all over his body. They went home, they slept, he woke up, he found that he had a wet dream. Now the strict rules is what? Before you pray Fajr, you take a shower. He came to a group of Sahaba, he asked them, well, I know the rules is to take a shower, but you see my condition. I'm cut all over. What can you find for me? Now they stick to al azima. They say, well, Islam says you have to take a shower, you have to take a shower. The Sahaba, they want to please Allah. He went and took shower, the water get, got into his wounds, the temperature level went up, and then he ended up dying. When they come to Medina, they informed the Prophet wasallam. the Prophet was very, very upset. You can rarely see the Prophet will talk like this. He said, قَتَلُوهُ قَاتَلَهُمُ Allah." They have murdered him. May Allah murder them. Prophet rarely curse. They've killed him. May Allah kill them. Why didn't they ask? Since they don't know the rulings. The remedy for the disease of ignorance is to ask. But ask whom? People that have knowledge. I'm coming close to say. Those that will say you have to come together in tight line and pray. If that happened to initiate a disease or spread it, someone died because of that, what will be the reaction of the Prophet ﷺ? Pay attention to it. Those that stuck to the rules, they think they were being pious. It doesn't show any piety. It just shows one's ignorance of the law of Islam. When it comes to Salat, well detailed, but Allah said, حَافِظُوا عَلَى الصَّلَوَاتِ وَالصَّلَاتِ Guard strictly over your five daily Salat. Stand before Allah in devotion or obedience. But when you are fear, or when you are in fear, here Allah said, farijalan rukbana. Then you can pray on foot or riding. Now those that explain the hadith, they explain it in the context when you are afraid of enemy because that time they were facing a physical enemy it's called salatul khawf so the prophet would divide the troop one will fight 
one prayer. But this is when the situation is under control. But when it's not under control, you can pray even walking. Can you imagine that? Or riding your animal or horse. When I say this, some people say, Wallahi, I do pray sometimes driving my car. I know you say, Mom, this man, you're crazy. But go study the Surah of Sahaba. Sometimes they will pray walking. When they start to pray, they will miss the target. They will miss the time. I don't want to go to all that, but I just want to let you know. Allah said, when you are in fear, I do not see a Muslim nation or the world in general to be in fearful state than this moment. So sticking to the strict rules at this condition, you are doing people a disfavor. You are putting yourself in danger. You are putting others also in danger. Don't think doing it, you are more pious. You ain't. May Allah give us a better understanding. I hope this part is clear. You are doing exactly the right thing in this moment. But Allah said, فَإِذَتْ مَأَنَنْتُمْ When the state of fear is taken out, then worship Allah. Establish the salat as you have been taught initially to do it. فَإِذَتْ مَأَنَنْتُمْ فَأَقِيمُ الصَّلَاةِ May Allah give us a better understanding. Apollo Mantasman was tough for Allah, he was a common servant seminar. Men could let them in fast off for all of Rahim. Allah said, Fazit man and to make Guru Allah come out. So when you are in a state of safety, remember Allah as you have been taught. So this remembrance is Salah. I hope this part is clear. So you will see a lot of brothers arguing, should we come together, should we stay away? I mean, Hadith says that, yes, that's Azimah, but there is a Ruqsa there. That's the part that you are missing. May Allah give us a better understanding. Now number one, number two, face mask. You know, a lot of people don't get the concept of at-tawakkul ala Allah, putting your trust on Allah. You see a lot of brethren, man, after you believe in this Imam, what's up, are you afraid to die? Man, tawakkul ala Allah, ya yeah. <laughs> Right? So they think like, once you put the face mask on, you are less Muslim, you don't have a taqwa. No, Allah said, khuzu hidrakum. Take your precautions. Nobody knows Allah. Nobody fears Allah. Nobody has a more tawakkul on Allah than the Prophet ﷺ. But when he is to be set out for a battle, he will have what we can call today uh, bulletproof. But those days, there were no bullets that are used. There were sword. So he had a sword approved. Do that mean that the Prophet doesn't have a taqwa? Do that mean he doesn't trust on Allah? It doesn't mean that. So people in terms of relying on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are of three categories. Some people, they just take the means and they completely forget about the creator of the means. They think like the mean alone can save. That's wrong. That's like a non-believer. Wash your hair, have this, do. Someone can do all of that. You will still be diagnosed with the disease. Right or wrong? Yes. We've seen it. A lady, she doesn't go out completely. She order everything. She will later on diagnosis with the disease. So these mean alone can now protect one. Second group, the flip side, they said, we will disregard all the means. We just put ourselves, trust on Allah. This is not tawakkul. This is at-tafarruz, being negligent. 
Yes. All right. Playing with your life and playing with the life of others. The excuse that we may give to these people is because they don't know the Sharia. Otherwise, the Sharia has tell us to take our precautions. The third group, the successful group, they use the means. At the same time, they rely upon Allah, knowing that this means cannot protect you on its own. But it's Allah who can use it as a mean of your protection. May Allah give us a better understanding. I don't want to make it too long. We started at 120, it's 125. So may Allah protect us, give us a better understanding, and uh, keep us uh, cured. And uh, thank you, brothers and sisters. Uh, you have stood up by your masjids, by your communities, by the humanity throughout this difficult time. And may Allah reward you, may Allah bless you. May Allah put the barakah in your life. Qumu ila salatikum. Ya rahmatullah.